what makes a video cinematic. You might think that you need the latest and greatest piece of gear, fancy lights to help your shots look better, or the best camera that you can afford. All this stuff can help you, but it's not necessary at all. Yeah, the visuals are important, but at the end of the day, it's about just like sharing our experiences through video. And the most important part of that is being able to tell a good story. Every type of artist has different tools to tell their stories. Like an author uses words or a painter uses paint, I guess. I don't know why I hesitated on that. As video creators, we have a ton of different tools to tell our stories. And each one of these tools should be used in a very deliberate way. Like the same way that a painter would think about what color palette they're gonna use for their painting and what mood that color choice emphasizes. The same thing can apply when making a video with something like lighting. The look, the color, the angle of the shot, of the scene that you're capturing, these all contribute to the emotions and feelings of your video. It's our job as filmmakers to be super intentional about every single creative decision that we make because they all add up to the story that we're trying to tell. If you've never made a video before, the biggest thing probably holding you back is just being overwhelmed by not knowing where to get started. When it comes to documenting our lives, like there's a lot there. I think it's important to set boundaries with ourselves to know like, I'm going to make videos about this. For example, for me, I've decided that I'm only going to make videos documenting my journey as a creative person. Another example could be like coming of age videos. Maybe you're in your early 20s and you're going through a lot of big life changes right now and you wanna document your experience. It's super important to have these boundaries because otherwise making videos can take over your life and not necessarily in a good way. A couple years ago when I was trying to figure out what type of stuff I wanted to make, I would just film all the time. And I was always wondering about like, oh, that would be a cool shot, I should get this and it would take me out of the moment. It got to the point where I resented carrying my camera around with me because it felt like I was always on, like I was always working, always filming, and it wasn't fun to do that. So that's why having a clear idea of what you are filming is important because you need to find time to leave the camera behind and just enjoy the moment. I have a really hard time making videos if I'm not in a good headspace. I tend to overthink things past the point where they're like productive anymore. It creates so much noise that just distracts me from what I should be focusing on, which is just letting go and being creative. Whenever I feel like I'm getting too much in my head, I'll try and force myself to get outside and away from the computer, away from filming, and either go for a run or go climbing. But sometimes those things aren't enough. Therapy is something that I've put off for a very long time. And that's why I'm super grateful that BetterHelp has sponsored this video. What I've learned from starting therapy, finally, is that there are concrete tools I can use in my daily life to free up space in my brain to focus on the things that I'm passionate about. It usually takes less than 48 hours to get matched with a therapist, and it's really easy to change if you don't get as lucky as I did because I love my therapist. Her name's Maya. But if you're not as lucky on the first try, it is super easy to switch. And it's not awkward because you literally just push buttons, so no confrontation. If you're interested in trying it out, check out the link in the description, betterhelp.com slash Audrey Ember or pick Audrey Ember during sign up for your first month. You'll have 10% off, which is pretty cool. Whatever experience it is you want to document, your priority should be documenting your thoughts and feelings as they come up. And I know it might be weird to like talk to a camera, it might be a little bit awkward. That's totally normal. It is weird and awkward, let's be real. I like to think of it like I'm speaking to a close friend. It makes it feel a bit more natural. It's almost like a journal entry. But obviously on top of just capturing what you're thinking and going through, you have to focus on also capturing like fun moments in the moment things. Let's pretend you're about to go on a trip and you want to make a video about it. The morning of your trip, you could decide that you want to shoot a scene of you getting ready to leave. When I try and plan what I'm going to film, I like to think of them as like little scenes. It helps make sure that I capture specific action moments that will help move the story forward. And also, it's great because once the action is finished, I can put my camera away and not think about it anymore. Whenever you go to a new location, make sure you get a couple establishing shots just to kind of show the viewers like where you are. It's easy when you're in the moment 
to not realize what is special or interesting about the place that you're at or what you're doing. So try to get as much coverage as you can. It's way better to get more than less. 87.5% of the time I'm filming by myself. I know that was very specific, but and it's hard to make sure that you're getting all the shots that you need. Something I've been trying to like force myself and do more often because it does take a bit more time is setting up the shot, going there, sitting down, whatever, testing it, and then going back and checking your camera to make sure that it looks good and that you're focused. Even though sometimes I get lazy and I'm like, I really don't feel like setting this up. It'll be fine. Do it. Because if it is bad, then when you're editing later, you're going to be very angry at your past self. So avoid that and do a test shot. And if you want to make sure that's in focus, sometimes I'll just put like a random object where I'm going to be sitting, like my phone or my backpack, just so that you can focus on that. Set it manually and then go and shoot the real shot and it won't move. You'll know you'll be good. Also, having multiple sources of audio is awesome because you never know when like one of them might click randomly. Normally I have my shotgun mic going and then I'll have a more direct mic going. I actually like to use my phone a lot. I'm using it right now. Or I'll use something like this guy, which I'm also using right now, as backup for the backup. Because uh, <laughs> I don't trust nothing the amount of times. Don't use gear as an excuse to not make things. It can just help you make your things look cooler, but it's not going to make your storytelling better, which is the most important part of making a video. It's definitely more important to get the shot than it is to not get the shot just because you don't have your fancy camera on you. Once I have all the different moments shot and I've gone through whatever it is I was documenting, I'll drop them into the timeline and make something called a rough cut. Basically, I just take out all of the moments that are unusable that would never go in a video and just lay them out in chronological order. I color code them by scene just so that I have a good idea of what I filmed. And then once I've done that, I'll write it down on sticky notes. Each sticky note correlates to a different scene in the timeline. To the side, I'll try and write down the traits of who I was at the beginning and who I was at the end. And hopefully these two sticky notes should have pretty much the opposite traits written down on them because you want to see that growth, right? I like doing this because it just helps me get a clear idea of where I want the story to go and what I want it to be about, like what lesson I'm learning and how I can show what that process was like. Once I've got the A to B figured out, I like to make this like story graph to get a more visual idea of what the story is going to look like. This isn't anything crazy special. Like I just split into three acts and I'll put all the scenes. So every sticky note, every color coded block somewhere on this graph to just get an idea for where things are gonna go. I'm a very visual person. So I found that like laying it out physically really helps me just figure out where the holes are and also just get a sense for like the pacing and making sure that I have a solid amount of like variety in terms of tone. Like you don't want the whole video to be upbeat and happy. Like there needs to be a little bit of contrast. And this graph helps me make sure that I have at least a foundation of it. It's a lot easier to see like like what's missing in hindsight, you might have to go back in and add in a VO segment to explain how you got from A to B. As long as you're being truthful to the experience, I don't think there's anything wrong with shooting something in hindsight if you think you need it to fill in a gap. It's very easy to fall like too far into over planning and over scripting. The thing with these types of videos is that letting the real moments shine and not fighting the footage will make better, more authentic videos. If you ever feel like you don't know where the video is going or you're not sure how you're gonna link this part to that part, try and take a step back and think about like what actually happened and if you're being truthful to that or not. And a lot of the time you might actually be trying to like wrangle with it in a way that just isn't natural and isn't flowing properly. And a lot of the time that will help fix any blocks you might have while editing. Whenever people ask like, why do you like making videos? Like, why are you doing this? I've always been like a quiet person, especially when I was younger and it's sort of just transformed into a form of self-expression. And I'm super lucky that by sharing my stories with you guys about my career process. It's been really cool to see you guys relating in the comments to some of the things that I've gone through over the past nine years now. That's insane. I feel like some of us have literally grown up together and that's a really special thing that like would not be possible without this. No matter what your reasons are, 
or what type of stuff you want to make. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. It helps support the channel. And I will see you soon with another new video. Bye!